Hello fellow classmates, my name is Jamar Johnson and this is my ICP, Individual College Plan. I have a personal model that I like to go by and it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. So a little bit about myself. Well, as you know, my name is Jamar Johnson. I was born in Barbados on a very beautiful island and the small area that I lived in was called Wetchmahal St. Thomas. I have five siblings, one older sister who's the oldest and three older brothers and a twin brother. From a little boy, I always knew that I loved music and my mother always tried to find new things for me to like do and try to find out what I can be successful in. So I, could, I did every sport you could possibly think of. You think of it, I've done it. I discovered that I loved to sing and draw, but I was so indecisive of exactly on what I wanted to do. And because I started a new, and I started to get older, and I started to get a new prayer life and receive a new prayer life, I got my answer exactly on what I needed to do, and that was to minister through song. A little bit about myself. Well, as you may know, my name is Jamar Johnson. I was born on July 11th, 1996, on a very beautiful island called Barbados. The small area on which I lived in was called Wetchmahal, St. Thomas. I have five siblings. It was three older brothers, and the oldest person is a sister and a twin brother. So, from a little boy, I always knew that I loved music, but my mother was never able to tell that I loved music because I never presented it to her. She tried everything in her power to try to find something that I could be successful in, and I ended up doing every sport you could possibly think of. You name it, I've done it. <laughs> when I realized I can sing and draw, I was so indecisive on what exactly I wanted to do, and then when I first started to get a, a prayer life, I started to actually receive my answer. So I know now that I am supposed to minister through the gift of song. More about me. Growing up, we didn't have that much money in my family. And me and my twin brother, we used to travel back and forth between the US and Barbados. So when I was here, he was there. And when I was there, he was here. We were never able to stay here at the same time. At a certain age, I began to trust in the Lord and believe that my dream and my goal is something that can make me successful. Because my sister, she's a doctor, my other sister. My brother, he's a math professor at a college. They're, everyone's pretty successful and they all have the things that make them unique. And I found exactly what made me unique. And I knew I had to follow this path. So at some point I told my parents, I want to stay here. And then after some point of time, they decided that I could have me and my brother finally get here and we made ourselves a little bit more financially stable. And then, you know, of course, there's financial aid and stuff like that. I currently attend NIAC with, to achieve to get my BA in music, and I'm expected to graduate in 2020. My personal mission statement, I'm gonna start by saying, I start off my morning every morning with a prayer. That's the first thing I do. I have to put my armor on, I have to know that when I go out in the world, I'm protected and I'm covered by the blood. So I start my morning off with my, my prayer, and I say, Lord, I ask that you cover me in your blood, and I thank you so much for everything that you have done and everything that you will continue to do within my life. Lord, I ask that you order my footsteps, oh God, and to help me not to operate out of my own flesh. I pray like, like you said in your word, Father, oh God, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and you give me a peace and a sound mind. I pray that the enemy comes under subject of the Holy Ghost, and at the end of my prayer, I always end with, Lord, not my will, but your will, that will be done. I end it with that because when I think about my life, I know that I, he has a plan for me. I may not see it, I may not understand it, but I know he has a plan for me, and I know I have to follow through with it, the straight and narrow path. And if I can get to where I need to be, I can save many souls that come behind me. Let's get into a little bit more about exactly what is a life wedge. This is my definition. This is not 100% accurate, you know. It says, in life, there's always an input and an output, and such as if you put in work, you can get an output of something, or some would say an outcome. Right here shows a shovel, as you can see. The two ends of the shovel is called the output. The actual shovel itself is the input force inside of the dirt. There's an ax that also shows this example. When the ax itself inside of the log is the input force, but the log is the output force, the both ends. As in for this hammer and the chisel, the outcome is the actual board again, and exactly how it's angled, but the input is the actual chisel inside of it and the hammer. 
Now, the actual definition of a life wedge, it says wedges are a part of your everyday life. For example, a zipper, a pencil sharpener, a cheese grater, and a shovel all makes wedges. As you can see into this um, picture right here, the output forces are the outside of the zipper, and the input force is the zipper itself that connects the two. There's something that separates them when you zip it down, you know? There's something that comes in between it. That's the input force and the output force. Over here, I have a couple of life wedges, a life wedge list. It says skill enhancement, strong education, healthy living, Bible reading, commitment, de dedication, practice, focus, love, and of course, God. In this slide, I explain exactly how a life wedge can apply to me. How you ask? Well, I wrote right here, as you can see, I can be like David. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down, that all this assembly may know the Lord saves, not with the sword and the spear, for this battle is. Then I also wrote my purpose in life. I wanted you guys to understand a little bit about me and what I wanted to pursue. My purpose in life is to become an inspirational teacher where I can have an impact on others' lives all around the world after watching and waiting for mine to be transformed and guided by my faith. Over here, I also wrote a small little poem. It's called By Faith. It says, faith is believing when you have not seen that you have help that comes from without or within. But when you lift your head up in prayer and God of the future, every secret he hears, faith does believe even when friends don't understand or you don't see someone to lend a hand, a way in life and declare a path there, you will see the God of the heavens become. He has done it all for me. By faith, you must travel and face what life gives you, but it's up to you to make something good of what you receive. No man limited can do it. It's not having faith that will limit you. When I think about it, I see my ideal wedge and I see my reality wedge, the real wedge of where I am and where I would like to be, you know? I think about it and I laugh sometimes because in my ideal wedge, I wrote stuff like practice more. Some people like to say practice makes perfect. I like to say perfect practice makes perfection. Doing more constructive things with the time outside of Netflix, of course actually listening and being able to communicate with others, praying at your prayer time, at your designated prayer time, always being there for your family, of course, and focusing more on school and graduating with at least a 4.0. Then there's my real wedge. And then on this list it says, not finding enough time to practice, becoming a very distracted with social media and TV, procrastination, of course, a lot of us have this issue, reading my word, pursuing my degree and my focus, and work in my field. Goals that I have, I wrote, the first goal I have, obviously, that I need right now from a small thing I learned from this class, is that I can get a planner, so I can plan my life out a lot better and be a lot more organized. I wanted to graduate college, to get a new car. I always wanted to be in W, preferably black, small, no. Uh, I wanted to get a new home, an actual house. I didn't want to rent anything. I wanted to get married before the age of 28 with two kids, a little boy first and a little girl to be more exact. And then I also wanted to build a, a home back in Barbados so if anything is to happen to me in the future, I can always go back home not, and knowing that I have something of my own already there and set aside for me. I also would just love to just travel the world now that I'm young and so, like, so that I'm not in a weird place and I don't know what's going on around me. I like to just know people, get to meet new people and branch off, you know? For my spiritual goals, I wrote, spend more time in God's presence, really getting to know him, to be able to save as much souls as possible and plant seeds and hope that they can all be nourished and saved. Unlock more parts of my heart, tearing down any spiritual strongholds or walls that, is, that I'm hiding behind, reading more of my daily bread, of course, and spreading more of the gospel. As for community goals, I volunteered for this class. I volunteered 
um, at a soup kitchen. It was called the Holy Apostle Soup Kitchen. That was the most amazing experience I've ever experienced in my life. I would have never probably actually did it on my own, but I actually did learn a couple of things from that method. I learned that in my life, I want to be able to raise money for the homeless. Anything that they may need when they're cold outside, they can get a jacket. If they're hungry, they can have food whenever they actually want it, you know? Helping people to get off the streets, that's the most important part for me, especially young people. Using my gifts so that if someone can be saved. If I can, small things, like if I can just sing in the train, I used to do that all the time, I called it TSM, which is Train Station Ministries. Sing the train, and whatever I make, I just give to the first person I see, it benefits me because I feel at peace and I know that they're happy with whatever. With whatever. I also want to volunteer more and more soup kitchens and for the Salvation Army. I have my own inspirational scripture and it's actually in 1 Corinthians 6, 13 to 14. And as you can see, the picture says, stand firm right here. You see the guy standing firm like that. It says, watch, stand firm in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. I am a big fan of love. I've mentioned it many times before in this class. Love is love and faith is my two important things in life. Without those things, I can't be successful. I can't be who I want to be. How can I love someone who how can I love someone who I've never seen and, and can't love someone who's standing right in front of me? And that's how I think about it. And that's how I know that this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And this is the scripture that makes me motivated and remember everything that I learned so I can teach it. So I have a couple things here, if you can see it. It's the drum principle, the wedge principle, the Medela principle, and the big picture approach. In the drum principle, it says, is the thing that keeps me on track. It's the thing that keeps me and my guard up at all times and ready. It's the thing that keeps me focused on my dreams and my goals. For the wedge of principle, it says, just like the narrow but the sharp shovel that you've seen that I showed you in the diagram before, it says, it can split wood. It's, it is a sharp, focused life, and a sharp, focused life is, is a, in fact, more effective when it comes from a dream and a goal. The Mandela Principle, if you can see it, the principle tells me it's okay to struggle, but you have to hold on. Everything God does is necessary. And no matter how long it takes you, you will win. The big picture approach, it says a philosophy that encourages taking a broad view, a bigger view, and seeing the other side of it. This approach includes seeing things at a brush stroke or a canvas, some would say, and a context level. A little bit more about myself that I forgot to tell you guys is that when I originally came to Nyack, I didn't come here as a BA in music, I came here as a psychology major and I wanted to at least do mi uh, music in the background, but something kept pressuring me. And then one of the professors who actually knew me from singing in Maine one day, he saw me, his name was um, Professor Overseer Sneed, because he's also my overseer. He said, no, that's not what the Lord wants from you and that's not where you were supposed to be. You're supposed to sing. So then I ended up auditioning for NIAC and then I learned a little bit more about what the music department is actually capable of doing. I wrote a little list here, but I'm gonna break it down and abbreviate this a little bit. Um, the Bachelor of Arts with majors in music degree consists of a strong music program, which we have here at NIAC, with a broad range of additional academic studies. Students here or anywhere that is studying BA in music, they, ha they have the, ch the opportunity of getting a vocal coach with every semester that they have at their school. So it helps you to progress your voice and to perfect, like, perfect things like your diction, I have a strong problem with diction, if you can hear. Um, after receiving your degree in music, your BA in music, you can continue your studies doing a, a numerous amount of things, such as like liberal arts program, or work in a variety of related fields that you know can actually fit into exactly what do you want to do with your career. Within these couple slides, like four slides, freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year, I don't know if that was the correct order, but was going on the top of my head at the moment. There's a, a, there's a certain amount of classes that you need to take for every single year. For the freshman year, I took Old Testament Literature, World Civilization 2, Air Training 1, Theory 1, Class Piano 1, Fundamental of Singing, Basic Theory, and Chorale. The reason why we take Chorale and Old Testament is because this is, a, in fact, a Christian school. So I have to also, I do receive a Bible degree at the end of everything, a, a minor in a Bible degree as well with my BA in music.
Sophomore year, I do New Testament literature, college writing two, ear training two, theory two, Western music to 1700s, introduction to music technology, and Nyack Heritage. We take Nyack Heritage because this is Nyack, and there is another branch in a place called Rockland that we have to learn exactly how it was built and how it was structured and where did it even come from. Stuff like that that's very important for us to know as attending to this school. For junior year, I take Ear Training 3, Theory 3, Music of Diverse Cultures, Introduction to Spiritual Formation, Information Literature, World View of Music and Worship, Music of the 20th Century. All those things, they kind of all fall under the same subject. But Ear Training and Theory is very important. Without those things, you're not really gonna understand music at all. And then you're not really gonna be pursuing exactly what you wanna do. So if you really wanna get to know your gift better and get into to understand so many different things like keys and stuff like that, air training and theory is like the, the strongest thing in a music degree. For your senior year as a BA in music, you take air training four, theory four, music of the 19th century, senior seminar, introduction to some, philosophy, music of the 18th century. Uh, when you take, if you didn't realize, they each go up one, two, three, four, for the four years that you're here, you took theory four, ear training four, and every year you can go up. You can even do it either every semester if you wanted to, just to knock it out of the way. When senior seminar is when you take everything that you've learned for the past four years and you present it to the school and the music board and you show everyone what you have learned and how you're able to go out into the world and teach everything that you've learned. Graduation is not the end for me. It is, in fact, just the beginning. I wanted, I've asked, the word said, ask and you shall receive. I've asked my parents to be here. I've asked the Lord to prevent me from going back, to find a way for me to find my way here so I can further this education, so I can learn and teach people and save as many souls as possible because I didn't always have that mentality. My mentality when I was little, I just didn't care about anything. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't even want to even be in middle school anymore. But now I've furthered and I've asked to do something better with my life. And I know I'm going to continue to keep going up and up towards music because the more you learn, the more beneficial it is for you as well. And for my last slide, it is an appreciation for your professors. I want to take the time out to say thank you for my professors because they're so lenient, they're so loving, they're so kind, and they, and they operate out of a different spirit. They don't operate out of, I just came to just do my job and go home. They do what they love, and I love that. And this slide, I says, teachers who love to teach, teaches kids how to love learning. Just from watching my professor, my professor um, Sharon Lindsay, or Professor Spivey, I realized, I realized and I evaluated exactly how they teach and what they actually care about. And I can tell that the best thing about teaching is that it matters to them. The hardest thing about teaching is that it also matters to them. We may not be easy to manage, such as myself, and to correct, such as myself, but you do do it out of love. And because you do that, I am, I'm glad to say thank you. And I do love you, in fact. For, and I thank God for giving you guys the strength and the patience to manage people like me and all the other students who's not so easy to always handle, you know? And I love you guys for not giving up on me and anyone else in the class. Thank you again.